And welcome to Scruff of the Neck on Twitch. You'll see some marvellous creatures tonight. The mid majesty of Rory Wynn in his natural habitat, live with a guitar. But right now, a sight not often seen by the human population. It's bears in trees and their representative, Ian. Hello, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm going to stop doing this now. <laughs> I was going to see how long you were going to last doing it. It could have been, yeah. been an interesting interview the whole way through. It could have just become me forever. I think it should have been. Exactly. Maybe you should have a rethink I, about your personality. I, I do think I could be more at Edinburgh. I've often, people have said it to me, we past lovers. We could all be a bit more at We could all be more at We could all be a bit more at Edinburgh. But Ian, thanks so much for joining it's us right, and the Bears and Trees. And we need to get straight into this. Well, you know, Bears and Trees got to have the bear socks the going bear on. Panda socks. bears. Panda, is, is that... Your top bear, you'd say? I don't know. Bears. I think the bears are all equal in my bears eyes. You, know? you yeah, can't pick favourites around here. You don't want to have all a favourite beautiful bear. creatures, bears. And yeah. we're not going to disrespect any bears this evening. Is there any certain like couplings of bears and trees that you like? Do you like a panda in bamboo? Uh, panda in, in bamboo. Uh, bamboo's not a tree. That's grass, oh, I think, technically. God. Who's, who's that's that some, in now? Uh, <laughs> I have got some fun facts up here ready, <laughs> yeah. ready to go at any moment. Fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of fun facts, we yes. have our little... Um, Two trees. Little one lie. Poll. Yeah, two truths and a lie about the band in yes. general. So these are our options. You can get voting for now, Twitchers. Do get involved. I love your twitching over there. <laughs> um, we've got Ian bribed a policeman, and yes. your name's been spelt wrong. Yeah, my name's been spelt wrong there. That's all right. That's we, fine. We all make mistakes. You know. Maybe maybe your parents spell it wrong. Who knows? I think you know? I spell it wrong at yeah. the end of the day, but <laughs> yeah. it's just overcompensating. So Ian bribed a policeman. Okay. I, f I feel like you'd do that. I've only, I've only known you a good 20 minutes. Uh, Cal's never walked a dog. Hmm. Has Callum walked a dog? I don't know. Ever. <laughs> no, he didn't flinch. I think he's walked one. Oh. Um, and G. George. Won a medal swimming. Well, there's, so there's a common misconception amongst bears and trees that um, George can't swim. And oh. he actually was in swimming galas when he was younger. And he won medals. 100%. Well, yeah. so that's definitely a truth. Callum, Callum has never but walked has a dog he, But either. did he win? Who's walked a dog? And I, these are actually, I don't think you've done it correctly. These are all true. You reckon they're all true? 100% they're all true. Well, yeah. we'll soon find out. We'll have to go <laughs> to the rest of the band <laughs> in a bit. But do keep voting. <laughs> and remember uh, to get your questions in for the band because you're involved in this as much as I am, as David Attenborough. Um, so do get your little <laughs> questions in. The people are going, people like, he are just can't saying, swim. George can't swim. <laughs> George, can you swim, mate? Can't you. He can't, can't tell, tell me us. that. Oh, I tried Secrecy. to catch him out. You see that? No chance. But... Um, we want to sort of get to know the band a bit better. Yes. And that's what this is all Who about. Who doesn't? Yeah, I want to exactly. get to know the band a bit better. We want better. to know you intimately, mm, I'd say. Intimately. Um, so I thought to kick things off, we could have a little game of Mr. and Mrs. Oh, Mr. Yes. and Mrs. So, okay. Ian, are you yep. up for this? Oh, oh this is what the whiteboard's for. Yes, yeah, what the oh. whiteboards are for. <laughs> and this is a complete get surprise excited. for you all. So obviously I'm going to ask you questions. Okay, yeah. and, and do you know what? And your co Front Ooh, Matt come on, Callum. Is going to be doing. So just, just so you're aware, one time me and Callum were playing charades and yeah. I put up two fingers and he immediately got Star Wars. And then he came up and what? put up a certain number of fingers and I immediately said, The Lord of the Rings. We are in sync. You're in each other's we're heads. This explains how the vocals flow. We have so known each other since we were five, so it's, it's pretty, we pretty intense. Blooming out. Are you the same person? Basically, he's a bit more colourful. That's not the question, though, yeah. thankfully. So I've got some questions. I did get this off. Uh, fun things to do on your hen party uh, <laughs> <laughs> website. So these are where the questions are from. So the first one, embarrassing crush. So who do you think Callum's embarrassing ooh, crush ooh. could be? You've got to both put one down. You got? Has anyone got any ideas who Callum's embarrassing no crush could I, I, be? Callum doesn't have shame. This is <laughs> embarrassment no doesn't shame. really go go well with Callum. So I don't think embarrassing crush... I'm going to have to push you oh, both okay, for an okay, answer. Okay, okay. This is a difficult one to start with. We're really getting to know you both. This is intimate. Don't write each other, by the way. No, That's fair enough. Because it's, it's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. It's just Someone, the truth. Someone's put, um, is every member of the band of Bears and Trees? Callum said, no to shame. We're getting some good things. Let Callum on the couch. No, it's COVID, baby. It's COVID. We're not it's allowed. It's COVID. We've we, been told. We actually, they haven't yeah. fallen out. Um, we can confirm that. Have you got your answers? Then? Yeah, I've got my answer. Okay, first one. I, it's bit, I wrote quite small. Ian, what do you think? Callum's weird crushes. Uh, Jacob Collier. Jacob Collier? Oh, good shout. Yeah. Good shout. It's not right. It's not right. What are you saying? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Tom Holland. <laughs> but, oh, is that? Uh, 
as Spider-Man. Only as Spider-Man. <laughs> that's, that's actually fair I like enough. a man in spandex. Respect. Nice. Um, what is Callum's weird quirk? And I, I oh, only want one. Yeah, I want I'm your gonna, top gonna, weird I'm gonna go, quirk. I'm going to try and go back in time with this one. Going to go back in time. Real Obviously, early. Uh, so, do you know what? Abby makes a good point. That's not weird. Tom Holland yeah, is... Tom Holland's a handsome man and he's, uh, he's got abs for days. So I, I kind of respect that. So what's, what's Callum's weird crush? What are we well, saying? We've done his weird crush. We've done the weird oh, crush. No. What's Moving the on. Weird Come on. Keep up. We're, we're fast moving. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's interviewing who here? We're all learning. There's bears and trees. Where are we? It's intense. Yeah. Come on. I, I know what your weird quirk is. Oh. oh do you? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, this I don't is know worrying. if you can actually do it anymore, but I think I've got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I think, I think we're on the same wavelength now. So I'm going to make you reveal in five, four, three, two, one. Ian. He can turn his, inside, his eyelids inside yeah. out. No! Yeah. no. Eyelids inside out. One correct. Well <laughs> done. Easy. Okay, so here we go. Can you still do that? I don't know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> don't try now in COVID era. I don't want you poking your eyes. Okay. Which Disney character are they most like? So what do you think when you when you look at Callum? What are you see? Jeez, mm. what are you thinking? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Abby Black says, "Please do not demonstrate." <laughs> um, so please keep your eyeballs where they are. Um, oh, oh we've, we've got some suggestions here. Yeah, what we what are we saying? Re so <laughs> Stitch has come in, which is quite fun. Uh, we found Callum, baby. Stitch. No, yeah, Stitch. I think. Um, anyone Stitch got any ideas sense. for what what have you have you got? Remy the Rat. <laughs> that's, is that nice? Yeah, oh, that that it's going. It's going. People it's think. going off. So I don't know if that's going to sway you. <sighs> Which one are you most? Are we talking personality or well, aesthetic? That's up for you two. That's the question. Uh, and you two have got to decide. I'm not going to help you. If you guys divorce we're after gonna have, this, we're that's, gonna have that's to discuss up to you two. Cause yeah, this I'm, I'm going to go for a, maybe have a you, slight curveball. Have you both gone for a one? No, I've got one. Stop leading him with saying slight curveball. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. Oh, well, yeah. No, you can I, I write. You can have the that answer. Now. Oh, no, no, can you not? You can't, no, you can't have no, that. No, it's there. I would have written it if it didn't. I'm come gonna out, have to push you for an answer, mate. Um, let's, go in. let's do this. There's a lot of. There is a lot. Of divorces coming in. Remy, Remy from Ratatouille. The, the Ratatouille, the ride of all our dreams. Oh, that was beautiful. That's what, people, that's what the people wanted. Remy, so true. Give the people what they want. Okay. And we've and the the poll has ended as well, so we'll have to jump in with we'll that in a bit. <laughs> but for right now, to reveal what Disney character are you most like? I've gone for Prince Zuko. I went for Flynn Rider. Oh. oh. I mean, these are off. Flynn Rider. No, Cuff. you're not Flynn Rider. Let's be. Zuko Prince. I want to be a Prince. No, yeah. Prince he Zuko. Prince Zuko, exactly. Exactly. You're sassy. You look like a llama. Bam. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's, we'll, we'll do two more of these, I reckon. Easy. So. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's actually an emperor, oh, guys. So it, true. it was Emperor, emperor Zuko. Zuko. Oh, my so goodness. We've had confirmation I'm from the board. I've got to leave. You got it right. <laughs> Uh, oh Cusco. My God. Prince, it's Prince Zuko's Emperor Avatar Cusco. The Last Airbender. How did I get that wrong? It's oh my God. Incorrect. Okay. Incorrect. I've embarrassed myself on live oh. television. God, I'm afraid we're going to have to cancel the interview. Yeah. Well, um, what would what be their done? last meal? What would last be Callum's meal. last meal? Um, Let's say he's gone to prison. I don't know why he was. He was falsely e accused. Easy. Oh dear. Easy. And easy. Easy <laughs> last meal. Straight away off the bat. Three, I know. I, two, one. Ian, what have you gone for? Waffle burgers. Oh, Chinese no. buffet. You were so You're confident. You're wrong. You're wrong, though. He's gone. <laughs> he's gone for variety. Right Do you regret saying Chinese buffet? Oh, no, I would be dead. You can make it last forever. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's true. He will never die. And with that in mind, the final question: the thing that Callum is most likely to go to prison for. Ooh. Yeah, I can see it in his eyes. He's a bad boy, really. Yeah. Which one? Oh, no, I can't say that. I can't ask questions. Hold on. Um, I'm going to go with this one. So people are not agreeing with your answer. They're saying Callum is wrong about his own opinion here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Callum. You're not allowed your own opinion now. Um, Callum is evil. It's so true. So here we go. And a lot of the... <laughs> I hope this is right, because a lot of your Twitches are predicting this, and I don't want to say it to sway <laughs> you, but it's unanimous. So Ian, what have you gone for? What would Arson, Callum go to prison? or first-degree murder. Arson, Arson, and the whole it's Twitches Arson. agree. It yeah, would it's be... Arson. 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 Of course it would be. So there we go. That was lovely. And that was well worth like us nipping out and buying some whiteboards like, earlier today. Thank yeah. you for Joe for going out for those. So there we go. That was beautiful. Big round well of applause. Done, guys. There we go.
Why are we clapping that someone would commit arson? <laughs> what a weird way this is going. But we need to we need some celebrations as well, speaking of clapping, because you guys have recently just been signed. We've been signed, yeah, we got signed um was it November, December, mm. November? One of those. Uh, by Counterintuitive Records, who are an American indie label. Yeah. Um, and they're just, yeah, it's, they're really cool. They're lovely. And it's, it's just, yeah, you a got, dream come true, honestly. You got signed in lockdown. Yeah, well, it was TikTok. It was weird. What it was. was it honestly, TikTok? Honestly, yeah. We, we made a TikTok about a lot of the bands on that label, and the guy found us, and uh, he just loved our music. And so really? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So TikTok works, people. Uh, so if you're ever mm. wondering how to do it, it can work to some <laughs> people. How do, do you, how do you find TikTok, then? Because I find it hard to nail. Uh, yeah, well, the thing is, is it's it's brutal in many mm. ways. It just, like, you, you can put, put a lot of effort into something, and it will just no one will ever see it, because this... Al Gore's rhythm is just yeah. is just terrible. <laughs> He's got terrible rhythm and yeah. he can't he can't do it. Um, but sometimes you'll put Nerf in something and it will pop. And but it got us a record label, so we can't complain. Come really. on, you got to give me some tips then, man. I, I, I want a record. There label. are no tips. It's just random. It's just you just you just play the game, roll the dice. Yeah. It's like it's like the fruit machine. 100%. It's like a fruit machine, yeah. and, and you guys you guys have it's paid off. It has. Got a, it has. You got, got a lovely new EP out of it. Yeah. Which that's, we that's, adore. Thank you. It's brilliant. It's like. Shameless I plug. described it as a little bit of... Um, I liked your description. It's well. like an in-joke that you're all invited in. Yeah. And I can tell that everyone feels like they're invited because this Twitch is going mad. This is the busiest uh, Twitch we've ever had on Scruffle. I can't keep up with it. I can't. Freaking Al Gore. Freaking Al Gore, see? <laughs> it's Couldn't even mad. save the environment. Um, <laughs> but there's one thing that we... like. Obviously, there's some lyrics that really got me. and like mm -hmm. uh, I can never pronounce this word properly, so forgive me all Twitchers out there. Yeah. Uh, ibuprofen? I ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Why would I say it like a child? Well, I mean, it's language is for the for the conversation. It doesn't need to be said right. You know. Well, what I love about it is it, it feels like a pr like a narration in your head. Lyrically. Yeah, well, I think that's a lot of a lot of our songs are kind of very much stream, stream of consciousness, right? Is, th is that what you aim for? You don't. And it, has it ever been tempted to then refine it that way? Or well, so the charm? yeah, I think so. Me and Nick, the guitarist, we write all the lyrics kind of like half and half. Yeah. And um, so Nick t tends to write a little bit more narratively based. So he kind of takes an experience that he's had and writes it a little bit more like a story, kind of incorporating a lot of kind of uh, literature that he likes. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I go for more um, a feeling, right? I'm trying to capture what's going through my head at one period of time. Um, and it's, it's two different ways of writing. I think they complement each other really well, especially when you look at our like EPs. They're kind of split down the middle in regards to who wrote what. Um, and so they, get, they get like really nice they almost create a narrative in their own sense so this is like a lennon and mccartney sort of yeah but we don't hate there. each other at the end yeah well Hopefully. you've got to not make yet. sure <laughs> so do, you, do you feel ownership slightly for those songs it's, it's like you go the, the, well this is this no, is your song not this really is because song. when you write the lyrics um that's just one small part of the songwriting right so you've written the lyrics you've got those thoughts out of your head and onto paper and then the next step is bringing that feeling and that story to life with mm. the music so the music always has to um represent and uh, lift up the lyrics to the height that they need to be, right? So that we just come to the we come to the studio with a long set of lyrics, yeah. and then we'll just start jamming. Uh, Callum will be on the, the keyboard, George on the drums. We'll just be jamming out, see what see what fits, yeah. and then we'll come to what lyrics fit into that vibe afterwards. So we kind of like match it together. So like music first, and then you've got. So the some lyrics are always there, yeah. and then the music comes, and they make the song. So There's sort of a reference point exactly. at one point. Oh, yeah. it's brilliant. And what I think is also amazing, I think you might be the first ukulele band. We're not we've the first ukulele had on band. Scruff of the oh, neck. had on Scruff of the Neck. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say ukulele's been around for a while. Yeah, we, we, we we've, we've heard it. of it. <laughs> I believe it's very popular in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Fun, fun fact: the ukulele as an instrument originally came from Portugal, was then transported to Hawaii, where they adopted it because it was quite easy to play. Ah, I mean. Fun facts with bears in trees. Bears in trees. Fun fact number three. I think that is the third one. I can one. give you so many fun facts, <laughs> but I can't do Emperor Cusco correct. We've know? we've had a question. Why, why are the bears in trees? Um, they just like it there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> why are you got to ruin their vibe? Why are you got to ask them so many questions? Why are you the police? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bears deserve to be in trees, guys. If they want to be there, leave them there. Yeah, or, leave them there. Have Let you me. watched? Have you ever watched? And I. I I don't know if it's cruel or not, so I don't know whether to say it, but have you ever watched a bear being darted out of a tree? I I have, and I'm I'm ashamed to say that it is quite it's, funny, it's isn't it? It's hilarious. But it, it's, uh, you, you don't want it to you be don't, funny. You, oh, I like that they, you have to watch it for long enough to see the bear get up afterwards. Yes, yeah. That, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. And if they've got a little bit of trampoline action, when then they're bouncing up and down, all the merrier. I personally would enjoy being darted out of a tree and then landing <laughs> on a trampoline, right? Next music so. video. We've got it written. Exactly. I'm easy. excited for that. 
Oh, amazing. So what I also want to do, because I feel like your songs really touch on a lot of feelings, emotions that we all feel, mm-hmm. and that you say it in such eloquent ways, and it's advice, and you help your fans in that way. Yeah. I see you as agony aunts, agony uncles. Oh, is this a segue? It's a segue, <laughs> baby. You've read Ooh. me like a book, like your lyrics I on the <laughs> screen. So if you have any agony aunt, ag- agony uncle questions you want to ask Bears Den, not Bears Den, bears sorry, den. guys. So this bears brings me on to another one, I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> Bears in Trees, then do get agony them in now and we can do them. But I've managed to f- uh, get a few beforehand and I, I was hoping you could you could help us out a yeah, little bit. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're I'll give you anonymous, some advice. of course, so don't. Don't worry about it. And we can keep yours anonymous, although your name is on Twitch. Um, <laughs> so let's not go too far, too much in. Uh, my friend and I fell out just before lockdown. It's happened before, and we always make up, especially when we're in all in like a big group together hanging out. However, the amount of time since we're not speaking is increasing, and I'm worried it's been too long to save the friendship. You got any advice? That's really that's that's mm. that's something that people feel a lot. I think yeah. um, humans work best on a face-to-face interaction basis that's how we've evolved right and so when you abstract that through social media through just distance it becomes hard and you kind of read into um things slightly differently i've been in situations with the band with everyone where because you're just sending messages because you can't see what that person's intention is behind those messages you can get kind of detached i think what it comes down to is if in person you can really connect that's what really matters in a friendship falling out is like um, it's natural in a way. It's natural. N- it's there's, gonna no, there's always bumps in a good friendship. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship mm. ever. And no. if you did have a perfect relationship, it would kind of get boring because you'd never be challenged yourself, right? Yeah. The point of a friendship is to grow together. And that involves having problems with one another. So you can grow together. Oh my God, I feel like I'm listening to a song for. But simultaneously, if a friendship isn't working, there is no harm in breaking a friendship off because toxic relationships come in all forms. So you need to be careful always, but so connection is important. Anonymous, what you need to do is val- check the value of that relationship yeah. to you. And then... Um, is it, it causing you, you pick, significant you harm? It and if it is, maybe leave it. But if it's not, and you do want to connect with this person, then go for it. That's important. Mm. I like that. Oh, I felt you answered that Easy, excellently. Lemon squeezy. Oh my God, get this man in a lemon newspaper. Squeezy. Oh, so someone in our group of friends yes. that, that I really like. Mm-hmm. Over Ooh. lockdown, we've kind of taken it to flirt in a little bit more. Um, my one worry is that once lockdown is over, they may not feel the same way. And by taking it further now, I'd ruin the friendship. Have you got any advice? Yeah, so in my opinion, mm-hmm. if you have romantic feelings for someone, yes, the friendship is um, friendship's always important, but what you're doing is you're masking your true feelings to present this kind of false idea of a friendship. You're almost lying to them in a way. Yeah. Now, it's not negative. I'm not blaming anyone because no, no, we no. all do this. I've done this in the past. But really, what's important is being honest yourself so you can live an authentic life um, and making sure that you two together are in the relationship you want. And if you bring up these feelings and they don't feel the same way, then you can understand that go away, process those things properly, and come back and have a good friendship. You, I've never been in a friendship that's ruined by someone expressing their feelings properly, no matter what the feelings are. Yeah, I mean, it's, if someone says, oh, I really like you, that's not a negative no, thing at all. It's, it's like, great, I'm fit, you know? Exactly. <laughs> and if you, if, if, if you then have a, a relationship that breaks down, then that's, that's okay, that's life. But if you yeah. don't, like, then you, could, you might miss out on a great life instead of being kind of like, you know, frightened to take steps that will improve your life greatly. What's life without risk? Risk. Yes, that's I what love we risks. need. Look, we're living in a world of risk right now. Right. And this is beautiful. Like, Ian, psychology degree, so true. I have uh, two psychology degrees. That's too many. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what colour should I dye my hair for lockdown? Coping bears and trees, please and thank you. That's from uh, Virtue Lily. Um, what colour? What are you thinking? What's the in colour at the moment? Ever, uh, yeah, I, I don't go with what's in because, you know, the society is so fickle. Yeah. You've you got to be you, right? Yeah. But do you remember, I don't, uh, this is such a weird reference, but WWE, right? Uh, you know that Speaking character. Speaking our language. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that, one, that one wrestler who, for like ages in the noughties, had like just crazy loads of loads of colours in his hair? Oh, Triple H or something? No, I don't think it was Triple H. Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Hardy. There we okay. go. He Straight had like away, lo- long hair, <laughs> multicolored. Do that, you know, yeah, and yeah. then pick or change your hair. Like be a Ramona Flowers, change your hair every week and figure one out that you like. You know, uh, experience. And, and, and if you over bleach it and it drops Shave out, Shave it all off. That's the risk, baby. And Shave you it all off. You New might look great. You, it's a win-win. It's, it's good, and then you just get to put more effort into your eyebrows. You know, all that time spent on your hair, straight on the eyebrows. Straight on the eyebrows. Eyebrow game increased. <laughs> Uh, how many bandanas can Callum wear at one time? I've from s- Sponkar. I've seen him wear four, five, four. 
You were seven. Well, seven on TikTok, and that got you signed. I mean, I mean that, that impressed. didn't get signed. That actually <laughs> lost us followers. No, I'm joking. Well, we, need to, we need to talk about it because you have your own bandana merch. I don't know. I, you whacked I, this out before. Show us to the yeah, camera. Okay, okay. Excellent sure. merch to anyone. I mean, we have so many fans on there. I imagine they have several each. Uh, but these, this is a lovely bit of bandana. Bears in Trees official bandana. Isn't that pretty? It is. We've got snails. Are they, should we do QVC this? Should we try and sell it? But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's QVC. So... Is um so talk me, talk me through this bandana. So the bandana is an essential part of anyone's uh, wardrobe collection. We've got a selection of very lovely uh, items that. Re- oh my god! Not got my microphone. Yeah. The bandana is a very important part of anyone's wardrobe selection. We've got mm. a lovely collection of uh, selection collections uh, <laughs> of items across the bandana. We've got those classic paisley. Remember paisley paisley makes the mm. girls go crazily. It does. Um, we've got some flowers. We've got some trees for. Bears in something. Where's the bears, though? But the bears have been transformed into snails because they're a lot less threatening. And we don't want to be threatening around here. I do don't we? want it's threats around my neck. Threatenings around Never your neck. Never threats around my neck. Threats around your neck are not what you want. And then we've got some, you know, risk. You've got a little bit of thorn, I mm. think. Because you, you don't want threats, but you want a bit of risk. Right? You want to you 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 look dangerous. You don't want to you you threaten often. someone. No. Yeah. So, so how, how much? Like, I want to buy one of these right now. How much? How, how much is they? How much are they going for, guys? They are ten pounds. Just each. 10, ten pounds. pounds. It's it's simply absurd. Ten pounds on the low end of that. For, not something, high. for <laughs> something I can wear around my neck, around my head, just sneeze into. Oh, it's perfect for a in this pandemic. A if ruin. you get bitten by a rattlesnake. A, oh. ca- a cast, if you break your arm, it's all sorts. You know? it, okay, and this is my big question. Yes. Does it fit every neck? Uh, no. 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 Um, the, the, very specifically, it doesn't fit Stuart Little's neck because I'm not making any merch that fits Stuart Little. He doesn't deserve it. You know, yeah. He's gotten too much. He doesn't deserve it. It okay? took me ages to realise you were talking about the bloody mouse the, Exactly, the bloody mouse. Like, Stuart Little, your mate, and you were like, like, no, Stuart Little. I thought, is this some oppressive figure that you guys don't like? No, it's literally a mouse. What has my life come to? Ah, oh, I love this Great. job. <laughs> I like it in four. Uh, there's some lyrics that I picked up on as well. In uh, 411, it says, and if my friends come over, we could play some Sonic and maybe I'd stop feeling so catatonic. Yeah, rhymes. I like the rhyme. Thank you. Did you guys, you guys like the bit of the video games? So Nick, okay, <laughs> this is actually a very specific. So Nick, is his favorite video game is Sonic. And which, there was which one taught me? Uh, literally all of He on wrote Sonic. Sonic fan fiction when he was younger no. for, a, for an Why English you lesson. Here? We have so Legitimately. <laughs> What yeah, he can't talk about it. It's what, very traumatic. Okay. What, um, is this, do you know any? Have you put I, your hands I've got, on it? I've played a couple Sonic games with yeah. Nick, but Nick is the Sonic. Is we actually Sonic went guy. to see Sonic the movie when it came out. And what uh, was your opinion? It was amazing. Oh, okay, I was good. so surprised. It was. It's actually sick. Jim so, Carrey does a great job in it. Like, well, have you guys heard? There's a sequel. There's a coming. sequel. There's a sequel coming. Ooh, part two. There Electric we go. Boogaloo. The you know? big reveals by a bandana. See Sonic the Hedgehog. Who that's that's the Bears and Trees way. That's <laughs> yeah, the Bears and Trees that's, lifestyle. That's, that's just a weekend. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so that, that lyric was about a period of time where I was feeling very down, down about myself, which is mm. a lot of the time. Um, and, you know, I was I was effectively living Wait, on... Weirdly, you're such a positive person. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Behind this facade. No, I'm joking. Well, um, like no, clans, I, tears. Exactly. Um, no, I was, I was effectively living in, on Nick's sofa for a bit because um, oh, okay. he was effectively just making sure I was alright and the way we, we dealt with that was just playing Sonic and it was just and also I, I liked the rhyme it's a very good rhyme yeah it's a you great can't, rhyme you can't knock me for picking catatonic Sonic that's a great rhyme yeah that should be that's more a big songs. brain energy rhyme <laughs> yeah. you know? but I think let's touch on that a little bit because I think <laughs> that's really important when you're talking to friends like everyone's always like speak to friends why don't you talk to me and mm-hmm. stuff like that but sometimes it's not about always it's hard sometimes to open up to friends. So sometimes the best way is just to do what you normally do, would with your mates. And that makes so such a difference. What was it? So there was th- this thing I saw a while ago, this video, this artist called mm. Baghead, because he wears a bag on his head. Yes. Do you remember that? Um, so it went, around, it went viral on Facebook. Yeah. And he's this guy from Ireland. And he, mm-hmm. I don't, I've never seen his art, but he says... Um, the problem with mental illness and mental health is there's a lot of solemnity around it, meaning like it can be depressing to talk about and that can then hinder a lot of your communications. And it's, it's right, like when you break your arm, you get all your mates to sign your cast and you're like, ah, look at this. When yeah. you go and get physiotherapy, you're like, oh, I'm going to go to physiotherapy. But you don't do that with psychotherapy. No. And like um, you don't talk about medication like you, you would a cast, right? And it's it's when you start breaking down those barriers and realize it's just a normal part of life and you can open those conversations in not like serious, we need to talk about this, we, need, we can just mention it then to it, each other. It's so hard. Exactly. To when it, when you have statement. to give this whole speech about... You don't have to come, yeah, you don't have to come out and announce. Exactly. My arm is broken. And, exactly. Uh, it's just a part of life. Yeah. And as soon as you can kind of go, Haha, look at this, this is just something that happened and then get on with normality, it's almost like 
your, you know that your friends love you for you and not this part of you. Well, that's or what this thing that's going I slightly that's wrong. That's what people about your music. It feels like yeah, sort of a joke and you can talk about it sometimes. Yeah, like yeah. Even your art, like your fans here, uh, Grandma Ian has Maggie, earthworm says, energy. Sign my Prozac bottle. <laughs> which, <laughs> I will. Uh, I which will I respect, which is a lovely... Lovely bit of merch you could possibly put out. Actually, that, that sounds like good merch. Get that down. Someone write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Someone write that. You've got a whiteboard, And I'm mate. not talking about t t-shirt. I want signed Prozac <laughs> that we're selling. Bears and Trees Pharmacy. No, I'm j- don't, we're not doing that. So you, got, you guys are all from Croydon, right? <laughs> yes. You know that what the Croydon statement is about like rubbish and stuff, right? Because Croydon's no, a little really. bit tough. <laughs> oh, it's, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? Heard it? It's don't mess with Croydon <laughs> <laughs> to try and stop people littering. So the, oh, I actually met someone who was like real big shot in like waste disposal or something and they said that Croydon has like amazing waste we have like 12 bins outside our front uh, yeah, outside of our because you feel house. threatened to mess like, with Croydon <laughs> you gotta put everything in the right bin otherwise they're coming for you yeah. <laughs> they're gonna take you down they are, yeah, 100%. But, like I read in the interview that you guys used to do put on your gigs in car parks is that true yeah yeah so we, we've gigged in car parks in front rooms in back rooms in mm. the woods stuff yeah. like that because basically we only had one dive bar gig place in Croydon, right? Yeah. And it shut down. It was quite dodgy in the sense that they didn't pay you properly and it was very last minute. And it shut down eventually. I don't think it was actually running legally or something. I don't know. But that was the only place that we could perform. And that when that shut down, yeah. we just didn't have any local scene. We didn't have anywhere to play. So what we would do is we would find these spaces that would we could just meet as friends and play some music. Sainsbury's car park was one because it was always <laughs> empty. Big up um, Sainsbury's, Sainsbury's taste of difference. It was, it's a very, very important car park to my my uh, my late adolescence, emerging adulthood. Well, mate, I'm hoping tonight's gig can be a little bit more exciting than a I don't car know why park. I brought the microphone to me to smile. But smile. You know, I but I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping we can taste the difference tonight, guys. Whilst you're on stage, you're about to get ready to go get Am sorted, cool. get those vocal cords warmed up, mate. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back in just three minutes to hear a beautiful set from Bears in Trees. Don't you go anywhere. I know you won't, but I just want to say it. Stop it. Go get a cup of tea. Come back. Maybe a beer. I don't know. But yeah, come back. <laughs> 